Scarab makes beautiful custom bicycles here in Colombia and giving us a tour today of the factory founder, Santiago Toro. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Thank you, Ben, for being here and for visiting us in Colombia. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm very excited. So we're here, I'm here to do the Bambino version of Transcordilleras on a Scarab. You and I spoke a few months ago about which type of power motor buy. You guys have six different bicycles yes, as base points, and then you can customize geometry, angles, tube, not the tube materials, but the tube thicknesses. Exactly, tube specs and, yeah, and diameters. And then you can also start do a similar thing with the design. A lot of right. base designs, and you can custom tweak it. When you and I spoke a few months ago, I had no idea I was going to get the chance to come here to ride, <laughs> so I went with the skinnier version of the, the Paramo. There's also a bigger version. Yes, correct. What, what is your favorite part about making custom bikes for cyclists? I think the best part about building bikes, uh, custom bikes, is that there's always some sort of a, like, um, I don't want to say lack of confidence, but people are a bit afraid because we're selling a PDF, <laughs> a very expensive PDF, <laughs> to be, to be, to be uh -huh. right about it. Uh -huh. uh, and people are like, all right, this is a leap of faith. And they jump into it and they follow our lead in, in very risky stuff. Like, hey, we're going to make a super aggressive bike because you're more of a racer or we're going to do a more endurance bike because you want to do this and this dream trip. And then Alejandro takes over and obviously pushes a bit your boundaries about this thing. So it's always some sort of a risky thing with a, with a bit of a faith involved by the customer. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is always so amazing when people come back and follow back with us mm -hmm. and tell us what they felt and mm -hmm. how we achieved what we told them, told them that we were going to achieve on uh, that bike mm -hmm. and it just tells you like hey we we can do a pretty amazing job and we can definitely change how people ride ride a bike mm -hmm. and what they what what it means to ride a bike uh -huh. uh, so i i relate a lot of that kind of to the success on every custom project mm -hmm. uh, we make and how that success is so different from one customer to another so building a custom bike is almost like building a custom route for someone and in some ways the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. And it might feel a little uh, bit of anxiety at the front end, but then you end up having an, an excellent journey together. That's a pretty good way to put it, yeah. Okay, so take me on the journey inside <laughs> Scarab. Show me how it's done. Every bike starts with you. And to start with you, we need two things. We need qualitative input, and we need quantitative input, which is actually very accurate fitting numbers. Mm. So we work uh, with, a, with a big dealer network uh, internationally, they are amazing fitters that can supply very accurate numbers. The customers we handle on a B2C basis, they are well-fitted guys. If not, we're going to direct them towards a, a fitter. Uh, but we have our own fitting in-house. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is basically the, the, the heart of the structural part, which is you. Again, mm -hmm. it's the rider, not, not a mass, not a percentile, not, it's you. Sure. Um, once we get that in, um, Basically, we start developing all the project from that. Uh, and the qualitative part just takes care of that role. And I think that's kind of where people start to connect a lot with Scarab. We ask very different questions because we ask a lot about what you like and what you don't like more than trying to find numbers. The numbers mm -hmm. come from here. Mm -hmm. We want to know what you enjoy on a bike. Mm -hmm. We want to know what motivates you to go out and ride hard or what motivates you to go out and ride long and explore. Mm -hmm. um, but we also want to know what you have not liked about other bikes. Super cool. Let's go upstairs and Absolutely. check it out. Yeah, sure, after you. Wait. All right, Ben, so we're going to start from where a bike starts the manufacturing process. Okay. Um, basically, we have our production uh, organized by modules. Here, Jose Juan uh, is responsible for module one and part of module two. Um, it all starts on a Monday morning with six boxes, these boxes here, you see, and they all have the specific tubing drop out some bottom bracket for every single bike, mm -hmm. for, for each uh, production order, sorry. So mm -hmm. it's all standardized by, by a batch of six bikes, all are custom made. And basically- so each, each box is a bike? Each box is a bike, okay. yeah, exactly. Once we have the box ready, well, this one's empty, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pull up one that's not- That's a, a very light bike. It is a super light bike. <laughs> um, and what we have here is basically, um, yeah. All the material. Sure. Yeah. So we have a tube, 
that's labeled with the exact um, specs uh, production order. This one, I know there are more seat stays and chain stays, not sure what's going on. Um, we have a down tube labeled 24006, 24006. And what Jose One is doing right now, as you see, everything is labeled. We don't want materials mixed up with any single bike as they all may have different tube setups. Um, so it all comes on cut. What we do is we set up on the mill and on the, on the other machining equipment, we set up the cutting and we have a PO ready for each bike. So what we have here is the geometry, all the specs, cutting, setting up the jig, bottle boss positioning, production order specifics. So you get to see if it's gonna be a T47, 44 millimeter head tube, um, if, it, if, if it's gonna have a, any specific uh, cable routing, like Shimano DA2, if it's gonna have a frame pump, like everything is considered here. This is kind of their... But before you get to this, you have been working with the customer for exactly what they want in terms of geometry, in terms of payment, in terms of, yes, do they want a frame? Exactly. Tank, do they want that too? Exactly, yeah. So that's, that's all uh, specified well ahead of time. Now we're in the production phase. Once weird. we get approved, what you're saying, a bike, not even a geometry, but, but we like to get approval on a bike because we want to consider even the concept. That's, that's on every video call we do here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to consider tire clearance, what groups that you're going to be riding, what, like all these specs of the bike are, are actually part of the handling and of the personality of that bike. So the more we get, the better. Once we have all that put in into a, a, a bike, we create a geometry and out of that geometry, we create all the specs. For how, the long, how long does that process take before you get to here from when you and a customer first start talking to when you have the specs fully printed out? Basically, that Monday morning comes six weeks after you made the deposit. Okay. So it's six weeks to finalize three steps of design. We split our design process in three, which is geometry design or bike design, um, paint design, and component selection if you're going to build a bike with us. Mm -hmm. If not, we still like to discuss component selection with you because we're going to need to know what tire clearance sure. you're going to be using. If it's a gravel bike, it's, you're going to use uh, 700s or you're going to use 650Vs. It's a different bike. Mm -hmm. So we, we take those three design blocks. They usually take six weeks. Obviously, there's people that delay more, uh, but we should be, and everything is planned to start on week six. Uh, production, Hosen one should be receiving a folder with the files and the tubing specifically selected for that bike. Nice. Yep. So once we have that, um, what we start doing is basically working by budgets. I love Jose. I just stay trabajando. Necesito entrar acá. No, 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 ni me faltaba. Um, so what he does is he starts, let's say, let's cut chain stays. So he cuts six chain stays on, on the specific equipment. Then, all right, let's cut seat tubes, seat tubes for those six bikes. Mm -hmm. And we build everything from over here. It should be better view of this one. Um, we use this uh, jig to basically set up every single bike, uh, every single geometry. And once we have everything cut and ready to go, we actually assemble it here, we tack weld it. And once, it, once it's stack welded, that should be end of week number two, oh, number one, sorry, and module number one. So we, at the end of the week, you're gonna see six bikes basically aligned there, uh, lining up in there. Every one of them is stack welded and ready to go. Um, any questions about module one? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. No. <laughs> uh, then we move into module number two, which basically is a, alignment table and welding station. Those are two processes we basically go back and forth on the same week. This is week number two, so those six bikes mm -hmm. come here. That's what they're working right now. Mm -hmm. And there's six new bikes in there, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't stop. And um, what we have is, first thing we do is we align the tack welded frame and we start the welding process. It's all TIG welded except for the linea. Right. And actually a bike comes through the alignment table for an average of eight, uh, eight, eight uh, passes, passes. Mm -hmm. um, that basically reduces the internal stray, uh, stress on the bike and uh, guarantees it's fully aligned. Um, once we finish this process, basically part of that second module is, uh, is attaching all the brace-ons. That's exactly what's happening here. They're actually silver bracing the bottom bracket um, 
uh, bosses and cable guides and everything. Once we have that ready, comes filed, finished, and we move into module number three, which is kind of the start of the paint process. There's a step three is base coat. It's primer coating, exactly. Primer coating. Yeah. Primer coating um, it all happens on this booth. And um, this one's a bit dirty one. We have this fan just to extract a bit the, the dust that the overall process creates. And um, we have this specific oven for uh, primer coating and anti-rust treatment. We anti-rust them beforehand. We primer coating, we primer coat them. And afterwards, once the full process is done, we apply frame saver uh, just to even, uh, how do you say that, prolong the, the lifespan of mm. the bread. So mm. yeah, that's uh, week number three. That's primer coating, making sure everything is perfect. All these bikes, except for this one, that's kind of the same color as the primer coating, but all of these bikes are ready to start mm -hmm. um, production, uh, paint process next week. How many people are working here and how many frames are you making a year? Perfect. So production team has four and occasionally a fifth uh, person that comes packing operations and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, but standard team is four. Uh, in, in the process uh, itself, in the production process, we make six bikes a week. That's uh, with the weeks off and everything, we aim at making 250 bikes a year. And here, uh, what you get to see is basically all of the paint process. Everything is paint on our process, so no decals, mm -hmm. uh, which means we work under a stencil uh, and a masking type of a technique. We cover what's going to be left on that color. We spray, we remove, and then we clear coat. All this is just work production, work in progress, sorry. Yep. Right now, Camila is clear coating the frame. Um, mm -hmm. Every single frame has a lot of layers of clear coat, just making it durable and shiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they <laughs> need to be shiny. Bikes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want them shiny. <laughs> so I'll, I'll let Alejo elaborate more about what's okay. the inspiration and the, and the, the idea behind all the paint job. Uh, but as you can tell, there's very specific Colombian elements present on each bike, mm -hmm. uh, either a flag or a made in Colombia text in Spanish but definitely the, the concept overall has way more deepness than simply adding a flag. Yeah, it's not just surface level. Exactly. Because of living it. Great stuff. Absolutely. Thanks, Alejandro. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. So Alejandro, how does the design process work from getting from an idea in your head or the customer's head to coming out on a bike with some custom touches and some yeah. of your own touches? Well, it's on story. I will try to make it short. <laughs> Basically, it starts with, I know how it feels to make a custom bike. Okay. So how I know it's, it's a very playful moment. And having as many, well, tons of ideas that how, it's about quite asking yourself, what do you like? Yes. And what's my preferences? I'm going to express myself. I have the opportunity to express myself on a frame. Uh -huh. Because it's my, it's my sport. It's something that I'm into. I'm deciding to do this. So I know it's a bit challenging because you have a lot of uh, like aspects to put in. Mm -hmm. So I get into the process, always trying to know oh, what the person is looking for. And, and we as a brand started developing different tools to help the process. So we different, offer different uh, complexities or more simple approach to different designs to help express every customer or every client or every person, sometimes they become friends. So I always try to push the person and the boundaries of every person to, is your opportunity to get, to get involved in the process. It's not a bike that you get off the shelf and that's it. When there's a regular process when you buy a bicycle on a given shop, but this time is that you get involved in the process. So it's a bit challenging for some people because it's not something that we are used to. Like yes. we have the help and you feel like having tons of alternatives is a bit daunting but then that's why I'm there for try to balance the ideas and to show you how how easy it can be um, I found yeah. it very helpful and I appreciated having different options to start with some like you say were fairly simple you know single color tricolor yeah. and some were very ornate like this Magdalena very uh, detailed you know almost looks like it's hand painted <laughs> and then so like having different neighborhoods to get, okay, I don't like this, I do like this, and then zeroing in and then having a conversation, like, how would you like to tweak it? What about this? What about this? 
and then there is some back and forth. Yeah. It's not like you just have to pick once and then that's done. Yeah. The customer can give you some ideas. You go away, you work on those, you come back, you present some options, and then there's a little bit of fine tuning. I try always to, uh, to teach the idea that having a custom bike, especially a steel bike, is that uh, normally when we try to get to buy something, we're gonna, you, we feel that that's going to be it for the rest of our life. Don't mess it up. So, yeah, that's the Don't feeling that it won't happen. And so I always say, you know what? Our bikes can be repainted mm -hmm. over the years because your likes are going to change. So every opportunity, every, every moment that you're going to paint a bike is a, it's a new moment. And so just think about this moment and, and a bit further away. Mm -hmm. So, and, and in the process you were mentioning back and forth is because I build something based upon a conversation, trying to get that person, and trying to, as I was mentioning before, it's like, yeah, I like the red, but what if to that red we add some different color or we can play with the oranges you're not used to it uh, so i try to push at the limits of something that you are comfortable with but it's very new to you so get as maximum as possible something to dare yourself to get into something that you haven't done that you, you didn't know you liked it mm -hmm. until you see it, the overall aspect of the bicycle mm -hmm. so different bike models different paint schemes and uh, complexities. For example, some of them, well, I, we always as a brand try to showcase Colombia and sure. uh, have a picturesque, yeah, colorful so, so tell me, tell me, Yeah, tell me about some of those Colombia specific themes. <laughs> so we're looking at the uh, Magdalena here. You're looking at the Magdalena. Yeah, every year we, 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 well, we challenge ourselves, what's the kind of story we're gonna tell this year? Mm -hmm. And well, Colombia being a very diverse country, plenty of stories. And this one is uh, based upon a personal story. I was, uh, which, I, which I think we all cyclists as persons get sometimes in our lives to tough situations emotionally. And I just took a bicycle, which wasn't this one, but I just took a bicycle to do this uh, uh, bike packing. And the routes I took, um, well, start to gather in my mind images, ideas, feelings, sensations. And there was a point in the journey that I get to get the bicycle on a boat crossing the Magdalena. And Colombia is a country that was developed along the river from the ocean, from the Caribbean Ocean to the, to the middle of it. Well, that's, that was the main route. Mm -hmm. And from that spine, all the small roads start to diverge into different regions. So all the route I did was kind of uh, that, I mean, I, I get to the central part and then I start doing all these roads that were gravel. When I just finished the, the journey and I start like something just happening to my mind, start researching a little bit and kind of understood all this story. And I say, I, I just crossed this one and this was being used by mules mm -hmm. crossing the Andes, which is not, uh, you're going to feel it in a couple <laughs> next days traveling along the Transcordillera. So I just wanted to kind of make a, an old, how do you say, an homage to the river, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. and so, to the old maps. And homage so, to the Magdalena River. Yeah. Yeah. So I tried to put a story of Colombia into the bicycle. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, that one that you will see in a moment, it's uh, our five year anniversary. Our name, Scara, comes directly from the old Escarabajo cyclists. I mean, we, we nicknamed the Colombian cyclists in the 70s, 60s because they were fierce and tough to climb into everything. So we were very specialist into that. So I realized that we haven't played with our name. So mm -hmm. why don't we make like this collection of bugs, especially beetle bugs, uh -huh. uh, and as well the climbing, you know, the mountain. So that's a map that's inspired on the top topographical lines. So it's a kind of a small story. So I always, for example, you will see in this frame are depicted the Chiva buses and uh, still yes. being a local transportation in yes. the rural areas that yes. connects far away okay, country urban towns that are depicted in Magdalena uh -huh. paint scheme. And they're, every, every bus is different. Every uh -huh. owner of the bus or company that owns uh -huh. the bus decorates it differently. Uh -huh. So when someone wants to make a Chiva bus, uh, I always play, it's, it's like, what are the colors that you don't like? <laughs> because you can play with another uh, hundred colors uh -huh. to that bus. And they will make a good rhythm between themselves. So that's, well, that's, I, I always wanted to create a special spirit of the brand that is inspired on Colombia, 
where the bike is to, to I mean, the bicycle is telling the story where it's been made. Beautiful bikes, beautiful stories, <laughs> beautiful paint options. <laughs> thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> you have a campesino. So you know the story about that. Yeah. <laughs> so you have six main types of bicycles, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, I can show you back here okay. a bit of, about each. We have base models that we actually customize and fine tune in writing characteristics and sizing for every customer. So we have a Delina, which is kind of, think about it like a hot rod. Uh, it's kind of a classic with a modern both mixed together. So it's actually the only model we built with a logged construction. Okay. The rest are fully TIG welded. Um, the linea, we're super uh, clear with that one. Only mechanical group sets and rim bricks. We keep it yeah. like, like, like we like them. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the full soul behind it. We have the letras in honor of our monster here in Colombia. And it's our climbing bike built out with a really amazing mix of uh, Kaize and Columbus. Letters, as you were telling us, 80 kilometer climb. Exactly. Oh, it's uh, and what's that? Uh, 3,200 meters of elevation gain just on one shot. So mm -hmm. uh, we want something that climbs. <laughs> <laughs> we want a bike that we would use to climb that. Uh, we make that one on rim brakes and disc brakes. Then we move into Santa Rosa. The Santa Rosa comes in three versions, an integrated version, fully cable, internal cable routing. Mm -hmm. Then we have a Santa Rosa disc, which is with the traditional semi-integrated cable routing. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the Santa Rosa rim brake. This is kind of a do-it-all bike uh, in terms of road racing. It's more of a very reactive, very aggressive and punchy, but still fairly light, uh, depending on the components and the build uh, materials used. The Apuna, which is what I like to call as a trail running shoes, if you want to put it into a different okay. context, yeah. uh, when trying to explain to someone why this bike, this does it all. Uh, so it fits 38 millimeter tires, and this bike, it's an amazing road bike as well. So depending on the season, people play with tire choices. It is basically a Santa Rosa, just with bigger clearance, okay. and some very yeah. small changes in tubing that allow those clearances, but has a road bike racing sole. And we have the Paramo, our pure uh, advent, uh, gravel bike, sorry. We make a couple of variants on that one, depending, mm -hmm. gravel has expanded, you know about it, uh, in many different like little segments that can be interpreted for every single customer. So we have uh, three versions of the Paramo, the standard Paramo, which is actually what you're riding, more mm -hmm. of a gravel race bike. Then we have the Paramo Plus, which actually has um, fork mounts and a bit of extra uh, tire clearance and the Paramo Ultra, which is the one I'm going to be using in Trascordilleras, which is an adventure bike. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. huge tire, lots of mounts all through the bike. Um, so, it depends on what type of gravel riding you do. We can base your bike on any one of these mm -hmm. uh, models. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, our latest launch, which is the Darien, which is a hardtail mountain bike. Mm -hmm. Pretty oriented into XE slash marathon. We can optimize it depending on the right characteristics that you're looking. So. This is, uh, again, our base lineup as we don't really offer any models, but we customize on top of those. Yeah, dude. All the way from the hot rod, rim brake only, to 2.6 inch new mountain bike. Exactly. You name it, we, we have something that can fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> and I have the Scara Paramo with the Campesina paint scheme. Seeing the detail in the bike just evoked all sorts of you know, romantic visions for me about Colombia. I've never been to Colombia before. I was so excited to come here to ride in general and to also try my luck at Transcordilleras in particular. So, you know, what I did custom here was working with Alejandro to, you know, add some custom colors, uh, but then also add some custom touches like the Zia, which is from my home state of New Mexico, and then a little enjoy the ride up top. I was delighted to the last few days you know, experience Columbia on a Colombian bike and it was exciting to see in real life the designs that were on here as we're going through the different villages high in the mountains. The experience of riding here, the friendliness of the people, the uh, absurdly beautiful uh, nature that is all around. It has been an absolute treat to ride a scarab in its home country of Colombia.